Welcome to the, the first of our monthly series of WorkRight software-based webinars. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Ryan Church. I'm the uh, software sales manager for uh, Posturite within, uh, within Posturite. Um, this, is the, this series of webinars is in addition to our well-established uh, informative and educational webinars which are run on the third Friday of every month. Um, we're looking to run these the second Friday of every month but we will confirm that um, after we have some feedback hopefully from today. Um, these webinars will come about the request of our customers who uh, were just looking for um, an insight into the types of products and solutions that we can provide to help meet various training and compliancy needs. Um, it made sense for us to start with our flagship product which is AssessRite and the, the management system which you can see on your screens at the moment which is called WorkRite. Um, please do send through any questions whilst I'm taking you through the presentation. This is the live system, it's a demo um, set up with a number of dem demonstration users in here but any questions that are asked I will be answering those towards the end. So without sort of any delays I'll take you straight into the tool. So I'm logged into our demonstration system here which uh, we call it the, the WorkRite Helping Hands account but I'm logged in as an administrator. There are within this tool three levels of access. Now the idea behind this is it's a learning management system to manage any number of e-learning courses but the primary reason for today's um, conversation is to take you through our, our DSE course which we call AssessRite. Um, AssessRite is going to train the end user or your, your, your end users throughout your organization to be a competent self-assessor when it comes to their workstation assessments. It trains them, it then tests them to make sure they understand their training and the, then assesses their workstation. Even as an administrator I'm still responsible for doing my own training which is why we can actually see a list of courses on this page as well but if I was logged in here as an end user I wouldn't see these administration functions on the left hand side, I wouldn't see my dashboard of information in the middle and I wouldn't see these quick links on the right hand side. However for the purposes of today it's easier to, to start from this page and, and, and show you everything rather than dipping in and dipping out. So if I was an end user I would just have a, a box in the middle of the page saying hi Ryan please complete your training courses above. Now you can see here there's a number of courses but if I take you straight to AssessRight this is how the course looks. So what we're looking to achieve as I've said is to train the end user to be a competent self-assessor. Um, the way this flows is they would receive an email originally saying please complete your training, click on this link, your username is your email address and your password will be automatically generated by the system. Once they're logged in they will see this page with a series of modules all greyed out and they must complete them sequentially. The reason they are orange and ticked is because I don't need to go through every single page with you today is to give you an idea how this looks but they would uh, need to carry out the training, pass the test before their assessment is completed. So the course itself looks like this. The first page explains how uh, the, the course is actually, uh, sorry, the the, uh, the page actually works. It's, uh, it follows the W3C guidelines, so it explains how to actually get through the training course to start with. <clears throat> First page is why workstation safety is important, and it takes you through an outline as to why the person is going to be sat there to go through this training in the first place. Bottom right hand side here is the next button taking you through each page and it's saying how can you be at risk from your workstation and then each time this icon on the left hand side here pops up the, the interactivity kicks in. If I was to click next without actually having completed the interactivity the page tells me to please follow the on screen instructions to continue that, but therefore taking me through making sure the person is paying attention to the screen and taking on board the information. It takes the end user through eye related problems and then also through uh, fatigue and stress. So it's a quick overview as to what the course is going to entail. Quick summary of that section, that module would then turn orange and be ticked and I would be able to disappear from my screen and come back at a later date and the, the system would have saved where I have progressed to. Um, so therefore I don't have to complete the training and test and assessment all in one go. So let's say the end user has the time to go through the training uh, 
in one go. It would take an average of just under 25 minutes. The training itself is modules one, two, three, four, and five. They take just under 15 minutes. The test itself takes two to three minutes, and the assessment takes five to eight. So, as I say, average is just under 25 minutes, but the training content itself looks a little bit like this. And the idea is that the end user goes through the training and, and they actually adjust a number of the smaller issues themselves before it comes to completing their assessment. So your screen and document holder, if I was a, a touch typist working from documents, maybe it would be more pertinent to put my document holder in front of me rather than my screen. But if I wasn't a touch typist and I was working from documents, potentially it would be more beneficial to put my document holder next to my screen. The idea is, like I say, resolving those smaller issues themselves before they get to the assessment. Taking them through where their screen should be in relation um, distance-wise from where they're sitting, and the fact that they should adjust their uh, the height of their chair to the, their keyboard rather than actually just adjusting it, not adjusting it at all, which we know so many people will actually do. A little information about the screen. Be amazed how many people actually don't adjust the contrast on their screen, but it's such a small, feet, uh, small aspect that can make such a massive difference. And the keyboard where it should be on a desk, and obviously bringing the mouse closer to the more appropriate position on their desk. I won't take you through the whole course; it's just to give you an idea of how it's presented. So once they've done the training, as I say, there is a test to make sure they've understood the content. This is the element that makes them a competent self-assessor. Now, the test itself, I you can see here, I've previously pass the test. There's a, there's a pool of 26 questions in our test, 20 of which are randomly ordered and randomly selected. So the end user never gets the same set of questions twice. In this example here, I've taken the test, but I've only got 18 answers correct. Um, what the system will do is it will give the end user the correct answers to the questions that they have incorrectly answered, because there will be assessment questions on those particular uh, test questions uh, in the assessment shortly. So I incorrectly answered um, to the question, sitting correctly means maintaining a correct posture for as long as possible and resting only when tired. The correct answer is adopting a posture suitable for the task in hand and changing periodically. So once I've passed my test, it actually activates the self-assessment. Now in this example here, I'm logged into the system um, under two locations because I have an office-based location which is called software. I'm, my, I'm also a home worker as well, so I have a, a second assessment. Your end users wouldn't need to complete the training twice in this example. They would complete the training just the once, pass the test just the once, but be asked to complete two assessments. I'm going to carry on with my software assessment here to show you how that looks as well. And it's the same principle as the, the modules themselves. Orange and ticked means completed. And you can see clearly on the left-hand side here the assessment sections, um, of the, the sections that are not complete. How you use your computer your display screen, your keyboard, all of these various sections, the questions we would always sit down with the customer at the beginning of the implementation process to ask, what would you like the system to do in this example? Now let me give you a, a more specific example of that. In the section which reads your health general, our first question reads, do you experience head, neck or backache whilst working your computer which you think may be associated with its use? We offer three answers here, um, but in the first instance, you may decide at implementation stage that you want to reword that question. That is all completely feasible, and we have edited that for a number of our customers to make it more pertinent to their um, their culture and their processes and procedures. But in the, in this example, we we're happy with that wording, and the options we give are never, sometimes, and often. Now, remember, the end user has completed the training, passed the test before they get to this point, so they're a competent self-assessor. So you're asking them a specific question about pain, um, which they are competent to answer. Um, if they answer never, there's no need for any automations within the system because there's no issue in this example. They never get pain at their workstation, which is the great option. If they say sometimes, we tend to automate a response to the end user in this example. So at the end of the assessment, the end user will receive a, a list of guidance notes. And for this particular question, generally the response will be, you said you sometimes get pain at your workstation. If this continues or worsens, please contact your line manager or please contact somebody who is responsible for DSE within that, for that particular person. However, the oftens, 
we tend to um, uh, set the system up to trigger that notification directly to the person that's responsible for resolving DSE issues. I think we'd all agree that if somebody answers that they often get pain, head, neck or back pain uh, while working the computer, we would want to hear about that. So um, it's really important at the beginning of the implementation that we um, uh, configure the system to notify the correct people. Now that could be multiple people on multiple sites. We have organizations as small as 80 to 100 staff all the way up to sort of 60, 65,000 staff. In those large organizations uh, there will be multiple people that are receiving uh, the often notifications but only for the people that they are responsible for. And if you can imagine that workflow for each and every question in the assessment, what this is actually doing for you is highlighting the people that you physically need to see um, as a priority rather than actually starting from A and working your way through to Z um, of your DSE assessment. So it's prioritizing your urgent assessments for you as well as resolving the, the small and medium sized issues straight away with the guidance information. So if you can imagine, we've gone through our assessment question sections, answered all the questions, when I finally click on this button, this uh, section here turns green and flashes submit. So when the person finishes their assessment, they click here and it would give them a, uh, a basically a, a list of the guidance information that we have set up in the assessment responses. So the end user, their experience is simply a case of they, can, they complete their training their test, their assessment, and they receive uh, a plain text email at the end of the assessment with the with the summary information that we have guided them to uh, how to resolve the smaller issues. But the bigger issues, the oftens, has automatically created this pie chart. Now, as I said at the start, I'm logged in as an administrator, but if you did have people that you wanted to be responsible for smaller numbers of people, maybe a building, a location, maybe a divisional department, um, they can be um, attributed the responsibility of being a client manager. We term that as a, a middle level of um, administration in the system, so the pie chart here would only be per, only be relevant to the people that they are responsible for. But in this example, um, student 27, I can see he's got three outstanding issues. I would have received as his administrator um, a, an email uh, guiding me that, this, that Stu has actually got outstanding issues with his assessment. But if I was to access it from this particular point here, I would use the pie chart. Now, by clicking there, I am now got access to see all of his training. And I can see that Stu on this particular date, which is earlier today, has completed modules one, two, three, four, or five. I can see that the test was passed with 90%. The pass mark is defaulted on this particular account of 75. We tend to default our pass marks on this particular course 85% but that is uh, changeable depending on your requirements. But I can see most importantly that Stu has completed his assessment again on today's date and if I wanted to I can export the completed, Stu's completed DSE assessment into a PDF. Um, Obviously, with this being a, a web-based tool, the idea is that it's a paperless environment. But if you did um, have the, the need to take this with you, just as a, an aid memoir or some a guidance, when you're sat with Stu doing a face-to-face -face assessment, it comes through in this format here. Back to the, um, the the live version, we are now looking, or we will shortly be looking once we get to the Stu's assessment, at Stu's completed assessment. It's the same answers and responses as we have in the PDF, but this is where you would complete your audit trail. Now on the page here, I'm looking at Stu's completed assessment. Uh, everything on the page at the moment, they are all issues within Stu's assessment. Now he's completed this himself as a competent self-assessor and what it's done here is it's prioritized at the top of the list the issues that are, are outstanding or not started. These are the, the, the bigger issues. So we've decided at implementation stage that if Stu is sat on the chair that is not fitted with casters, that is an issue that I as a DSE assessor want to hear about because I want to go and see Stu and make sure that he's sitting on a compliant chair. So from a, a, a process perspective, the manual work involved here would simply be a case of I want to put a note against this particular issue, I want to go and see Stu, I want to see um, uh, I have arranged an assessment with Stu to discuss 
this issue. I would suggest that that particular issue it would now be in progress. So you may have noticed there that the system is automatically putting the date, the time and the person I'm logged in as, that's my login address and this is a permanent audit trail, I can't now edit that if I decide that, that is incorrect. Once the assessment has been completed I've assessed to and um, ordered and provided, sorry, a new chair. I would potentially suggest that would be sufficient as long as Stu is comfortable after a period of time that, that issue is closed. Now you'll notice once this is updated that that has closed and it means that the only two not started issues are the top of the list. I think more importantly than um, well, not equally as importantly as uh, putting notes against the not started information is you'll notice that the majority of these issues are closed. This is the one here that I've just added a note to. You'll notice the icon on the left hand side is a manual note. But things like um, have you been um, have you been supplied with a footrest is answered no, but it's automatically closed that particular issue because it's not actually a particular problem um, within the setup of the assessment. So for Stu that wasn't a particular problem because it doesn't actually need a footrest and it depends on the sequencing of the questions. So the end user's experience is the, they've completed the training test and assessment and me as an administrator I am able to go in and resolve those particular issues and I would update the issues there. Taking you back to the home screen because that particular issue um, has been closed off Let's just refresh that. We would now be looking. Um, is now because Stu has only got two outstanding issues with the assessment. He's actually dropped to lower in the, the, the schedule. Student 27 has now got two outstanding issues. That's great on, a, on an individual basis, but I think the the, the power of these, this particular system is that you're able to resolve a number of issues. On a, on a larger bulk scale. So to be able to do that you want to be able to find people in groups. So trend analysis is so important. So one of the reports that I would tend to uh, go to straight away would be an assessment analyzer. So within an organization I want to see how many people have answered a particular question in a particular way. So we're looking at now our DSE assessment. This is section one, section two. If I take you to the same example I gave you earlier all the way down to section 14, your health general. I can read, do you experience head, neck or backache whilst working in a computer? Do you think maybe associated with its use? Never, often, sometimes. I want to see those 34 people that have said often. I click on the often and straight away I can see my list of users and on the right hand side here, is there any trend against the location? Okay, that's one particular report. Something else that is really important, obviously, is the completion. So I want to find out everybody that hasn't done the training and have been asked to do so. I'm going to run 50 people per page. I'm going to pick, I want to run people, the report by location, pick all locations. I want to find people that have been sent their login details, but that haven't started. This is the list I tend to call the naughty list, the people that you're chasing to complete their training. Remember these people would have received a series of automated emails to remind them to do the training in the first place, but this is a list that maybe I want to export to Excel and potentially send to a line manager or whoever your processes and policies um, uh, identify these people and, and ensure that they complete their training. Beyond that there's a series of 40, 45 different reports but uh, primarily it's to make sure that you're grouping the information in a way that is suitable for your uh, management information so if you're providing, you want a full progress report for uh, maybe a, uh, a quarterly um, health and safety meeting, you want a full progress, I'm going to run it by any group, you would then be able to run this information and find out by any of these categories here um, who how far everybody has got with all of their training. Um, I won't, for, for the purposes of today, I'm not going to take you through every single feature of the system, but the, the, the main benefit here is that you're training, testing and assessing every single um, member of staff, but you're actually able to resolve the issues on a, on a bulk basis 
and spend the time with the people that physically need you to be to spend time with them rather than having to go and see every single individual within your organization um, I can see there's been a few questions that have come through okay um, the first question is quite quite simply how much is it <laughs> um, we work from a range. The smallest number of licenses we tend to, to work with is around, is 100 because it becomes financially sort of viable around sort of 50 to 100 user mark. So anywhere from 100 licenses, the, the maximum we would be looking at is 10 to 14 pounds per person. Um, but on a larger scale, we would be looking anywhere down to 50p to a, to a pound per person. It does massively depend on the, the, the number of staff that you have and the number of courses that you're looking for. Um, okay. That is actually the only question that we've got at the moment. But if you could, um, if you did have any feedback, if you wanted to see any further information, um, we'd be really appreciate your feedback. Um, we are going to be running a, um, a monthly um, WorkRight software webinar. Our subject next month is probably going to be our accident management system. But if you had anything else you um, particularly wanted to see from us, please do let us know. Um, before we go, there's a few dates just for your diary. Friday next week, which is uh, Friday the third, no, it's not at all. It's Friday the 16th of January. Um, our introduction to mind mapping software is being run by the webinar is being run by Jamie McDonald. That's the uh, the first of this year's series of informative webinars, which I mentioned earlier. Um, Friday the 13th of February will be the next software webinar, and then the our showcase is the big one for us, which is a, it's in London, it's at St Martin in the Field, uh, which is just off Trafalgar Square. That is our showcase where we will be uh, launching our latest catalogue and it will be a chance to meet our experts. I'll be there myself as well actually if you wanted to go through things in more detail. That is Thursday the 26th of February. So um, thank you very much for listening and if, as I say, if you do have any questions at all, please do get them through and we will be in touch again very soon.